Let's talk a little bit about observations and inferences. Let's dive in. First off, what is an observation? Well, an observation is something that you experience directly using one of your five senses. Of course, your five senses include sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. So if you can collect information about your surroundings using those senses, it is an observation. So let's look at some examples. We're going to list in a table our senses and a sample observation that could be collected using that sense. So our first one would be sight. So we can see that the grass is green. It's a simple observation based on what we see with our sense of sight. We can hear a loud roaring sound in the woods. Now, we might not know for sure that it's a waterfall like this picture. However, we know that we hear that loud roaring sound, and that is the observation. With our sense of smell, we might be able to say, the wildflowers smell sweet. That's something we can directly observe using our senses. With taste, we can say something like, this ice cream tastes sweet. And with touch, we might say this rock feels smooth. So these are all simple observations, things we can collect using our five senses. It's important to note, though, that scientists will use instruments to extend those senses, allowing them to make observations that would otherwise be impossible. So, for example, we can see pretty far with our eyes. However, scientists will use telescopes to see even further. So, this image on the left shows an optical telescope that lets you extend your sense of sight. The image on the right actually shows a radio telescope that allows us to collect observations about space using senses that we don't have, but the technology itself does have. So using instruments can extend our senses and allow us to gather more and more observations in more and more detail. A quick few examples of other instruments include things like thermometers and x-ray machines, seismographs, and parabolic microphones. And these are all tools that allow us to extend our senses to collect more detailed observations. But what about inferences? Well, an inference is different. It is a conclusion that you reach after making your observations about something. It is not something we know for sure, but rather it's a best guess or kind of like a hypothesis. It's something that we think happened and it's based on our observations. But in addition, it's also going to be based on other information beyond observations. And that includes things like what is the context of the situation? What about our past experience and our prior knowledge? What other information can we combine with our observations to come up with some sort of conclusion? That's what an inference is. So if we revisit our table here, now we're going to add a column and we're going to list inferences based on those sample observations. So, in this case of using sight, we observed that the grass is green. We might then infer that, for example, it must have rained recently. Now, we don't know that it rained recently, per se, but we do know, based on past experience, that grass looks greener once it's well watered. So, if the grass looks very green, that's our observation, we can infer that it's had a lot of water. Therefore, saying something like it rained recently would be considered an inference. With our sense of hearing, we said, I heard a loud roaring sound. Well, we might infer that we are close to where the waterfall is. Again, we don't see this waterfall, but we hear what we think the sound of the waterfall is, so we can infer that we are nearby to it. Again, we don't know for sure, but based on the information and observations we have, it's a safe inference. With smell, we said we smell the wildflowers. We might infer that there are a lot of bees in the area because we know that bees like wildflowers. This ice cream tastes sweet, so we are inferring that it might have been made with a lot of sugar. We don't know for a fact, but it's a safe bet. Finally, with our sense of touch, we said this rock feels smooth, so we can infer that it was smoothed out in a flowing stream. Now, we don't know, but we can make that inference based on our observations and our past knowledge. So let's take a look at a kind of a neat picture which offers an opportunity for us to make some observations and inferences.
Here's the image in question, so let's take a minute and look at it and we'll make some observations about it. So first off, we might observe that this person is wearing a scuba tank. We can see with our eyes there's a tank on his or her back, and it's got tubes that go to his mouth. Uh, and based on the context and so forth, all the things we see, we can observe that scuba tank. We can observe that there's blue water around based in the picture. It's something we can see directly with our eyes. We can see the color of it, um, and so we can make that observation. Finally, we can say this person is in a cave. Uh, and now that's based on what we see. We see it's kind of dark, and we see all these rocks all around the image, so we can observe that they are in a cave setting. Now, for inferences, we're going to focus in on what is happening in this picture. It's kind of strange looking, isn't it? So we might infer that the photo is actually upside down. And we can infer that because it looks like they're kind of floating above the surface of the water based on what we see here. Um, but we don't think that a person can float above the water. So maybe an inference is that it's a photo that's just flipped upside down. But maybe that's not true. Maybe this person is somehow actually floating above the water. Um, and we are inferring that. We don't know that they're floating above the water. It's just kind of based on our observations. That's what we think might be happening. Uh, we might also infer that this person is swimming above something known as a halo cline. Now, this happens to be the correct inference, and I know it's correct because if you were to go there and collect more detailed observations about the water and the situation, you would see that they are floating within clear water that is less salty than the water down beneath. And so the difference in that salinity, the saltiness of the water, has separated it out. And it makes it look like he's actually floating in the air, when in reality this person is still underwater fully. Again, from the picture, we don't know for sure that's happening, but it is something we could infer based on what we are observing and our past knowledge. And so that's the very simple difference between an observation and an inference. Thanks for watching.